As China shows its true colors, Indo-Pacific nations are upgrading their naval powers to give China a befitting reply. China has been rejected by the entire world for its revisionist policies and therefore the Chinese PLA Navy has turned belligerent. The Chinese Communist Party is trying to unilaterally extinguish the claims of every other country in the entire Indo-Pacific from the South China Sea to the East China Sea and the Indian Ocean region. Every single Indo-Pacific power has come to recognize China as a threat and now they have started to upgrade their naval armory to take on a belligerent China. India, Australia, Vietnam, Taiwan, Japan and South Korea, all major powers have unveiled plans to match Chinese aggression by augmenting their own naval strength. South Korea is the latest country to make the big move. There are indications that Seoul is trying to arm its navy with an aircraft carrier. Forbes has reported that South Korea is planning to buy 20 F-35B stealth jump jets. This is a strong signal that South Korea might be considering acquisition of an aircraft carrier. South Korea has major maritime disputes with China in the Yellow Sea. Both China and South Korea claim an exclusive economic zone of 200 nautical miles from their coastline in the Yellow Sea. The EEZs of the two countries overlap with each other. Since both Beijing and Seoul are parties to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, the maritime boundary must be determined by the median line principle. But the CCP prefers expansionism over international law and claims a larger EEZ on account of its larger population and longer coastline. Now, by strengthening its own navy, Seoul wants to keep Chinese aggression and illegal fishing in the Yellow Sea at bay. South Korea is not the only country to strengthen its naval power in the face of Chinese aggression. Amid Chinese provocations near the Senkaku Islands, Japan has developed a stealth anti-ship missile that can penetrate Chinese defenses. Dubbed as the smashing super missile, the ASM-3 can travel five times the speed of sound and make adjustments in its trajectory, making it very difficult for the enemy systems to detect and intercept it. The ASM-3 can sink or disable several warships in a single strike. Australia too is looking to upgrade its naval capabilities in face of the growing Chinese threat. Canberra recently announced a 40% hike in its defense budget. The country will spend 186 billion US dollars on its defense program as against the 134 billion dollars committed for the next 10 years in 2016. The budget has been enhanced as a part of the new 2020 defense strategic update and force structure plan. As part of this defense upgrade, Canberra is set to buy new anti-ship cruise missiles from the US Navy. The AGM-158C long-range anti-ship missile that Canberra is set to purchase has a range of over 370 kilometers. Initially, it will be fired from the FA-18F Super Hornet aircraft and will also be programmed into other aircrafts later on. Moreover, as part of the $400 billion plan extending up to 2030, Australia will power its navy by replacing older frigates, adding patrol vessels and support ships. More importantly, Canberra plans to add more muscle to its naval forces in the Indo-Pacific by doubling the number of submarines. Six Collins-class diesel-electric submarine boats, each displacing 3,000 tons and a dozen new attack-class submarines, each displacing 4,500 tons, are going to form part of a power-packed Australian Navy. Australia is also the only country outside the ASEAN to approach the United Nations on China's claim in the South China Sea. As far as India is concerned, it has made several moves that hint at plans of keeping the Chinese PLA Navy in check. India has moved all its frontline warships and submarines in the Indian Ocean region. Moreover, India is also looking to buy six more long-range maritime surveillance Poseidon 8i aircraft. This will augment India's capacity to keep a tab over the Indian Ocean region and track any Chinese movement in the crucial maritime zone. And now, New Delhi is also making all efforts to militarize the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, which would serve as an unsinkable aircraft carrier for India, close to the Strait of Malacca. India has also expedited plans for basing additional military forces, including facilities for additional warships, aircraft, missile batteries and infantry soldiers at the strategically located Andaman Islands.
Last month, Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a virtual summit during which India and Australia finalized the Mutual Logistics Support Agreement. This allows the navies of the two countries to access each other's ports for logistics such as food, water and petroleum. Australia and India are thus weaponizing their strategic locations with which they can totally jeopardize China's trade routes and oil supplies in the event of a major conflict in the Indo-Pacific. Australia and India are thus weaponizing their strategic locations with which they can totally jeopardize China's trade routes and oil supplies in the event of a major conflict in the Indo-Pacific. Other countries like Indonesia and Vietnam too are upgrading their navies. These ASEAN countries like the Philippines, Vietnam and Indonesia face an existential threat from China as Beijing claims the entire South China Sea, including the territorial waters and continental shelves of these ASEAN countries. Indonesia has evinced interest in buying the Austrian Eurofighter Typhoon fighter jets fleet. Recently, the Indonesian Navy also conducted a four-day exercise in the South China Sea, strongly asserting its claims in the region. As for Vietnam and Taiwan, a proposed 6.9 billion US dollars military initiative would benefit both these Indo-Pacific countries. Vietnam is also slated to receive a second US Coast Guard cutter this year so that it can match the Chinese buildup in the South China Sea. Every single country in the Indo-Pacific region, therefore, understands the need of boosting naval power in order to beat back a belligerent China, if and when it becomes inevitable.